Every year winters are getting warmer and we don't have enough snow. So this year we decided to explore new places and went to Churchill, Manitoba in Canada. We drove from Pennsylvania to Winnipeg and from there we boarded a train that took us into a real Canadian winter. Here we are at the train station in Winnipeg and the time is 10.25. Our train is at 12. Here is Maria waiting for the train. Are you excited? Yeah. This train that runs to Churchill was launched in 1950s. After undergoing several renovations, it is still operational and comfortable. Train tickets can be purchased online. You can choose between sitting places, a single bed in a shared cabin, a separate single cabin with a toilet, or just a separate cabin for two persons. Initially, we opted for sitting places and then upgraded at the station, which was much cheaper than if we had bought a cabin right away. Since January is the off-season, there was no issues with the upgrade. So this is how a bed for a single person looks like. It's a full-size bed. It's somebody who is six feet tall can sleep comfortably in it. And this is what it looks like during the day. So it's fully folded and that's where the bed would be. In addition to that, there's a single person cabin, which also sits up into a full bed. Pretty convenient and comfortable chair for a single person to travel. Also, the train has a second floor with a glass ceiling. This is the observation car, second floor, where we will be able to see Aurora on the roof. This is the roof of the rest of the train. We spent a lot of time in this part of the train, looking out of the window. We were drinking lots of tea and had interesting conversations with other passengers. It's always remarkable to meet new people while traveling and listen to their fascinating stories. Time flies by unnoticed during conversations and on the road hunger creeps up quickly. The train has a kitchen on board and the menu is fairly simple. There's a menu there and then um, a variety of sandwiches uh, for the the hot meals. It's, yeah. Uh, meatballs and mashed potatoes. I've got uh, mac and cheese, butter chicken, and a vegan shepherd's pie. Nice. Yeah. Bon appetit. <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> so we got some uh, Japanese ramen food with us, and this is leftover from the place that is there. Shmitsu and some buns. So Maria got some soba. Which is pretty cool. Um, just put some hot water in and you have a meal. And I got some udon. Um, it's supposed to be only with snowflakes, but now it has schnitzel with it as well. The forks are from the train. They're wooden forks. Um, we recommend taking some, something like this on a train with you, at least for one meal. Um, but there is a cafe and a restaurant and they will serve for breakfast, you will have the option of an omelet with potatoes or a sandwich. You definitely won't go hungry. There is an excellent team working on the train. After a good meal, it was time to relax. 
we went to our cabin, where Ben had already made our beds early in the day. The cabin is quite comfortable, with very cozy beds. Ben is setting up our, our bed. That's so cool. Alright, there you go. The first day was coming to an end. On the following day, we had a five hour stopover in the town of Thompson. We got to Thompson, where there is a longer stop. I think we are here for at least three hours. We're going into town to get some food, and here are taxis. It's Thompson Station, and our train. In Thompson, taxis are available at the station, which makes it easy to get into the town. There are several restaurants in the town, a pharmacy and Walmart. We decided to have lunch at the local restaurant. During this time of year, one shouldn't expect a wide variety of food choices. When we were there, burgers, french fries and soup were the only options available. We returned to our train, which was taking us ever closer towards our destination. It's worth mentioning that there is no Wi-Fi on the train. Downloading movies or taking some books or board games is a good idea, even though the views from the window are enjoyable. Here we are in Churchill, just got our luggage and we are walking to our hotel. We went to collect our luggage from the cargo car. There, people were sorting through their bags and parcels, which they ordered a few weeks ago. There is no quick delivery or other comforts of civilization out here. Maria, catching up with her luggage. She said, take me to the most romantic place. And I did. We stopped at the place called Beluga Hotel. It was a very cozy house with rooms, a shared kitchen and two bathrooms. The owner of the hotel came on a tour from Australia. He fell in love with Churchill and decided to stay here forever. In January, there aren't many entertainment options, but we were able to book a snowmobile tour. Hi, Leroy. Morning, just taking a video. Maria. Nice to meet you. Hello, we're about to begin our snowboard excursion. 
Gonna have a shotgun and hunt some bears. Just in case there's any bears, John. You never, you never 100% sure. I have a well, good, I have a good camera for my phone. Right there. Yeah, <laughs> might see some foxes time yeah. again. So we're lucky, so you know. Yeah. All right, you ready? This is our skidos. They are waiting for us. Leroy took a gun with him just to be safe, although the bears have already gone far onto the ice in search of food. one should dress very warmly. We highly recommend using heated socks and gloves or foot and hand warmers, because the colds here are really severe and one can easily get frostbite. A face mask and a warm hat are a must. He's much, much, much warmer dressed than we are. Maria is a little cold, but still fine. Yeah, we are wearing those boots that we bought a long time ago. And they're handy for this trip. The cool thing about the snow machine, it has hand warmer. So I can put my hand on a, on a steering wheel and it warms it up. So that's great. And uh, all of our camera gear is trapped in the back. Some additional gear. And Leroy carries 12 gauge shotgun just in case there are some bears around. Midway through our journey, we were greeted by a small shelter next to an abandoned boat, frozen in the ice. So here we are, after riding for about five hours, we made it to this beautiful abandoned ship. And we're warming up and taking some rest in the shack. It's warmed up for us. I think Maria is feeling way better now. I'm gonna go in. Just say hello. Hi guys. Hi. Are you warm? Whoa. Oh, I started to feel my feet. Don't, don't burn them. It felt good to warm up our frozen feet and have hot chocolate. Leroy entertained us with interesting stories. Bird's Cove by the uh, shipwreck Ithaca. Makes a pretty good foreground if you're doing a row or stuff. Yeah, but there's no, like you cannot drive here. This is like... The highway's not too far. Some people will hike from the highway to here. Yeah. But yeah. aurora season, it's like minus 35, minus 40. So it's really cold, which is why I brought this out here. No, there's no hunting of uh, polar bears in Manitoba. Uh -huh. In Nunavut, they still harvest the polar bears, uh, but there's a very limited amount of permits that are mm -hmm. uh, issued. And that's for eating? They eat them? Eating, the, selling the hide. Um, mm. But Churchill, they've learned to coexist with the bears and tourism. And 
I guess the bears somehow learn to coexist with humans. Well, more of it the other way around. <laughs> the humans coexist, yeah. They kind of stay out of each other's way most of the time. Which means the bears learn something as well, right? Otherwise, like yeah, the... they're very smart. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're canines. I heard somewhere, or I read somewhere, that they're smart as a chimpanzee. So wow. Yeah. Just the polar or bears in general? Uh, polar bears, anyway. So. Yeah. The population here, we have about a thousand bears. Uh, there's thirteen populations, and this population is about a thousand around this area. That's awesome. The human population is about 800, so there's more polar bears. More bears. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. But they're all out on the ice hunting seals right now. Um, there's there's no way to see them. Like they're like you, they are so far off, right? Like you can't take yeah. a machine. Yeah, they do to go out. There. Yeah. The only time you probably see one is if one's coming from the denning area, and if they lost their cub or something. Uh, they might be coming, uh, but usually they'll stay out there until about February, um, and then they'll make their way to Lake Hudson Bay. And where where do they sleep? Like where? Like... Uh, well, they kind of dig a, a den in the um, the muskeg, uh, the base of a tree, mm. and then when the snow comes, it buries them in a nice cave. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Just the pilots working. Oh, just pilots. It's uh, probably a stupid question, but uh, people do ask it all the time. I don't know if there's a, there's a good answer or there's a scientific answer. Probably they don't mingle on purpose, like in a fight between a grizzly and a polar bear, who wins? Um, well, the barren land grizzly is about the size of a female uh, polar bear. So they might fight a smaller, smaller male or a female, uh, but a full grown, it won't take on a full grown po uh, male bear. A, a polar wouldn't, or a grizzly wouldn't. A grizzly, yeah, it's too big. Uh, they can, the males can get about, you know, twelve hundred to thirteen hundred pounds. I think the grizzlies get to the same size, right? At least, uh, at least not, the... not the barren land. They're a little bit smaller than the Alaskan. Ah, uh, yeah, the Alaskan ones. I see. They're still um, scary looking. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty rare to see them around here. There's like two people that maybe seen one in the past ten years here. Wow. But in the park further up the coast, yeah, uh, they have some trail cam footage and uh, uh, live stream footage of barren lands that way. There was an American hunter about fifteen years ago that was hunting polar bear in Canada, and he got one. It looked a little strange. It was like dark brown, the eyes, uh, bigger claws, bigger shoulders. So they sent it out for a, a DNA uh, sample, and it came back as a, a hybrid polar bear grizzly hybrid. Wow, how did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I was a little curious about it, and about 150,000 years ago, uh, the polar bears actually um, descended from the grizzlies, so ah. I think that's why their DNA was compatible. Interesting. That is interesting. There's been a few more hybrids spotted since then. Um, I think they call it a, a pizzly, so it's kind of polar grizzly, depending on the sex of the uh, the cub. I see. I think the other one's a grizzlor, uh, which I think sounds cooler than a pizzly. <laughs> pizzly is kind of <laughs> minimizing the accomplishment, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> No matter how warm it was in the shelter, we needed to head back. We highly recommend adventures with sub-arctic tours. Thank you, Leroy, for a remarkable experience. The next day, we set out to explore the town. The snow crunched cheerfully underfoot. This was a real winter. Hello. Hello. Here we are, um, walking around the city, trying to figure out uh, what to do. 
here we are walking around the town a little bit changed our clothes completely we were not dressed appropriately before we are now people are driving all kinds of things here there's another yes very cool monument for wolves Here's another interesting vehicle, the yellow one in front of me. I don't know if it's functional. It's the map of Hudson Bay. And polar bears and beluga whales. It's some places that you should not be walking to, for sure. We wandered around the town and saw a polar bear monument. Unfortunately, it was the only polar bear we had seen. All the bears had gone far out onto the ice to hunt for seals. Churchill is the world capital of polar bears. We hope to see them when we come here in August. Meanwhile, in the Churchill Museum, we learned about wild animals, culture and crafts of the ancient peoples of the North. It's simply amazing how people used to live in such harsh weather conditions without modern tech. There's a canoe. Two canoes, rather. Remember? It's very small. Antlers of a caribou, I presume. More antlers. We also visited a souvenir shop. They sell gems, t shirts, local crafts, and animal furs. in a local store that okay, sells things from local craft. Here's some sleepers <coughs> made by the Eskimos. They are cheap sleepers but authentic. Local attire, different figurines, canoe, some art. More art. Wildlife. Some furs. More art. For food there is a large grocery store in the town called Norsen and a restaurant called Seaport Hotel. It's the only restaurant open this time of year. The food is good, but not all menu items are available. The next day, we rented a car and went to explore the area. While driving, we suddenly noticed a fox in the bushes. The animal didn't pay much attention to us. Most likely, it was busy searching for small rodents under the snow. For fox, it's the main food source in the winter, besides rabbits.
here, Hudson Bay, is captured by the winter. It is completely frozen, and the bears, using this ice, went deep into the ocean to hunt for seals. To our delight, the sky became clear in the evening, and we were able to capture the sunset and the aurora. The train had made it into the station and soon we're gonna board it and go home and say goodbye to this beautiful place and it's cold weather. The days flew by very quickly. This trip was a breath of fresh air and a taste of real winter. We didn't want to say goodbye to Churchill because of the pleasant memories it had given us. One thing is sure. We will definitely return to see the polar bears. If you enjoyed this movie, please like and subscribe.